Dear friends, I hope you're keeping well. This is Jay in London and hey Timothy. Hello. So if we look at the clock above our heads, it's five minutes past one. Just to be clear, it is five minutes past one in British the morning. British summertime in the morning. In the morning, exactly. For some of you who follow our videos, especially earlier ones, you may recognize this place. We are, of course, at the London's famous meat market called Smithfields. We are here in the middle of the night or in the small hours of the morning because we needed to buy some meat for Timothy's very famous South African bulltong. Of course, the video about that will be coming later on, right, Timothy? Okay, there's also another one we've got up from yes, last time I made it. But you have a different piece of meat now, so the yes. butchering that goes into it will be different. Uh, so today, actually, although you do see many, many white fans around, this is actually not as crowded as it normally is. Would you agree with me? It's very quiet. Yeah. Well, I say that it's quiet, but something is making a ruckus. So, there are two wings to the market. There is the west, west entry and east entry. They're selling me, so we, we are actually going home and we can talk as we're walking. So, all of the meat trade for the restaurants, for the hotels, for the small restaurants, mom and shop, mom and pop shops and cafes, little restaurants and wagons and wheels that sell your burgers and hot dog stands, anything you can think of for any type of cuisine is here. So you can see loads of uh, loads of meat being unloaded from the farmers and loaded onto the cars. Uh, so we have noticed that there are very few people in there and many, many shops or stands were still closed. Not completely sure why. The trade goes on between about midnight to five or, five, six, five or six in the morning. But normally when we come here, it would be more. So you can see some people are taking little carts with them. Uh, to go and shop uh, so we've left the market we've purchased the meat that Timothy needed for uh, for his bulltong and a few other things so in this market you can get meat from English fields raised in English fields Scottish fields Irish fields there is poultry there are eggs uh, obviously beef pork lamb mutton uh, there is organic meat there is halal meat uh, if you need in kosher meat you won't get it here for that we go either to northwest london um, to northwest london sorry where there is a very large orthodox jewish community and there are butchers there or another way to get kosher meat haha -ha, you will be laughing now is to order it from France. Yes, it will come over from La Manche. Sorry, across La Manche from France to us. Uh, but there is a much, much larger Jewish community in France. And there are many more places where you can get kosher meat from there. And it would come obviously vacuum packed. Um, and I think most of it would be frozen at first. So we are on our way home. The other things that are in Smithfield there, if you look around, are various cheeses. Some of the stalls do that. Coming from, uh, they're all going to be cow's milk cheeses rather than goat or lamb or anything else like that. But it's basically almost anything off a farm 
they will sell. Yes, and they also have things like bacon, and they also have. I've seen. I think I've seen Serrano ham there in there as well. There was a chunk well. of ham. There was a chunk of sausage song. There were various um, sort of meat, sort of lunch and meat uh, rolls. So meat that has been um, ground up and put into a tube with spices. We're not talking a sausage that you cook, we're talking um, a sausage that may be three, four, five kg, well, more the three kg in weight that you slice off and put on a sandwich. So we are walking home now. You may hear how windy it is, but that's because we are quite tall buildings right now and it creates very much a wind tunnel effect. Of course the biggest wind tunnel effect you get in front of the walkie talkie building which you will have seen in many of our videos before. So now no special effects or anything. We are just walking in London, walking home from Smithfield to the Tower of London area. So the view coming up. Timothy, if you want to comment what's coming up. Well, not so much what's coming up, but what you're looking at right at the moment. Well, there. that's coming up in my view. Okay. I'm fine. trying to make it interesting a little bit, you know. It's like on TV they say, coming up. Coming up next is some old cathedral. Yes, let me try and walk a little bit slower so that I'm not shaking the phone too much. But uh, in front of you, in the center of the camera, is St. Paul's Cathedral, illuminated in light. By the cranes in the foreground. Yes. Oh, there is no construction right now, of course, because it's the middle of the night. So it's not as noisy as it would be in the afternoon. Uh, we are passing here St. Bartholomew's Hospital. This is the new wing, well, relatively new wing, which was opened about six years ago, uh, named after King George V. And this is the hospital where I have done some videos from, because this is the hospital where I do volunteering sometimes. Uh, we are, of course, in the square mile. The financial district of London, and as many like to think, the financial heart not only of the UK but of the world. Uh, so the buildings we're passing by house various banks, Swiss, American, Japanese, you name it. The construction site you see in front of you, this is the site where the British, British Telecom. Telecom headquarters used to be and they're no longer here uh, they've i don't know where they've moved to but in place of that uh, they are building what is promising to be fantastic office space with a gym and rooftop garden and, and restaurants the... and shopping shopping facilities so it's supposed to be a very posh uh, office building in the future. Uh, by the way, the building very well eliminated to the right. left. Right. No, let's go to the left of the St. Paul's Cathedral. It's uh, not anything that you would look at as something fantastic. It's really simple architecture. But this office building houses the London Stock Exchange. Yep. And the building to the right, 
also houses some of the London Stock Exchange and further this um, sort of brick colored building, brown building, I don't know what it is, but it's in the center of your screen. That's Goldman Sachs. In front of you here are the remnants of the church. And as a matter of fact, the upper floors here is a three level private apartment. We don't know who lives here, but people do. Some lucky family calls this a home. Um, I think about 20 years ago, the value of the apartment inside, I don't remember where I heard it from. I think it was about 3.6 million, but nowadays this is going to be more like 20 million. So that's where we are. Just giving you some of the views. Um, so usually at this time of night, I would have expected to see more people, especially as it's Wednesday, well, Thursday, wee hours of the morning. I would have expected to see more people falling out of the pubs, being drunk, but it's fairly quiet. I don't know where everyone is. What do you think, Timothy? Well, it is the middle of the week, so... And it is a bit late. Most pubs tend to kick out at around 11ish. Some open later, but it tends to be more the drinking bars rather than the pubs that are open at this sort of time. Yeah. Well. So that's why, in all of the kicking out, okay, the pubs closing will have already happened and closed. Yeah. Okay. But it, it's still unusually quiet yes. for this time. We normally would still see quite a few people. So the buses are still, of course, running. Uh, we have special night buses. They're all designated with a letter N for the night bus. Not quite all of them. Not all of them. Some of the bus routes run 24-7. And but some specifically the, night. Yeah, and most of the bus routes only operate from sort of 6, 7 a.m. until about 11 or 12. Uh, and then you've got some bus routes that operate 24-7, not too many of them. And then you've got some night buses that operate from about 11. And here's well, a here's night a night bus. It says N8. And that one will probably operate from about 11.30 a.m. till about 6 a.m. and it'll follow a similar route to the standard Route 8 bus, but the route will be slightly different. So it won't stop at all the same streets. It might take a slightly different route that is sort of a couple of streets to the side or where the regular one would sort of wind around. This one just cuts out a lot of those uh, elements. So there is a lot of rubbish in the streets. We'll hopefully it will get picked up overnight. So we'll just past the uh, St. Paul's tube station. And in your view, there will be more offices. The street that we're going to go down is called Cheapside. And Whilst you may not have heard the name of this street fair, um, if you read Jane Austen, Cheapside and Grace Church Street are mentioned quite early in the book because this is where the main characters aunt and uncle lived. They lived in Cheapside and Grace Church Street. And this is where Elizabeth Bennet and her sister James Bennet go and visit them. So they're famous. I mean, Jane Austen times, we're talking about, what, 200, 250 years ago. So it's not that recent, given how old London actually is. But at that particular time, it wouldn't have been one of the better neighborhoods. It would have been okay. It would have been okay neighborhood. Obviously, 
uh, Kensington and Chelsea at that time would have been posh already. So here is Zara with their fashions for only very, very skinny people. Um, just to get back to the buses for a second, I think, Timothy, you need to say a few words. The reason I don't know the difference between night bus or not a night bus is not because I am silly, you but because don't take them. <laughs> I don't take the buses. I don't do buses. Um, as Timothy likes to say, I am his princess and moreover, I'm his Jewish princess and Jewish princesses don't do buses or tube. They usually get into a cab yep. <laughs> or a limo. Uh, not so much a limo. Well, yeah, we don't have limo so much. So we're passing the one new change place. We've been in the roof garden of the shopping mall that has been sadly quite empty after covid many many shops inside it have closed down even though it is a very good location and they could have put many good shops in here um, but on the rooftop um, there are very nice views there and we've, uh, we've done a video with very nice panoramic view of the london uh, skyline from different aspects so here's a look into another sort of quintessential classic London street. Of course, more offices and, and Timothy. Just a <laughs> block that way. And to the right is where the uh, halls of London is. So where the Lord Mayor is, where all of uh, those people are. And we've also got at least a video on there i think we've probably got more than we've got video. five videos from guild hall yes uh including our special private tour and uh including our lunch with our local councilman so which was, was in the members the only members only uh room and i've done the video of this church which is called Saint Mary Le Bau. So the thing about this particular church, which I've explained in my video, the whole Cockney thing. Yes, if you were born within, within the distance, ear within earshot of hearing the bells of this church, you're considered a true London Cockney. And that's why I was saying, back 300 years ago this area wasn't the most up and coming because Cockneys were, shall we say, not at the top of the class structure. Yes, it would be considered what we would say today, sort of blue collar, I suppose. So here's some more offices, banks. Uh, so we are going now with the St. Paul's behind us. Uh, we're going down Cheapside and ahead is, is the Old the... Lady of Threadneedle Street. <laughs> yes, and it's the Old Royal Stock Exchange. It's quite dark in there, so I don't think the camera is showing well. Uh, but we will be passing the Bank Tube Station. Whenever you are in London, before you get on the tube, especially in the city of London, but I think it holds true for other uh, parts of London, but city of London, certainly. When you're looking at the map and when you're asking people how to get from one place to another, don't be too quick to jump on the tube because it may be easier, quicker, and more interesting to just walk. Sometimes if, if the distance going, between stations is quite short. If you're going three stations or less, it is quicker to walk. Yeah. So if we just look to the left there, we've got Guildhall just at the end of that street. Which... 
about one, two blocks long. Yeah. And of course we're crossing the street. Timothy is actually holding me by the straps of my backpack. Uh, and that's because I can't video talk and look watch for all the traffic <laughs> and look right and left and watch for all the traffic and of course in the UK when you step into the road or before you step into the road you turn your head to the right first then you cross to the middle of the road and you look to the left uh, which of course is not what they do in most countries in the world so these are office workers looks like it being picked up by the car to go home um, after a long long day uh, most of the time it's probably people who are on a business trip and not sort of natives to here so this is all the rubbish from the shop will be picked up overnight various it's not rubbish so much it's really just packaging so this is our Tesco Express uh, it used to be 24 7 not anymore uh, many shops have cut their hours after COVID or closed down altogether. Speaking of closing down altogether, this Oasis, which is a clothing shop or clothing chain, has been shut, I don't know, for how many, three years now, I would say. I don't I know if there are it any. Only opened three years ago. No, and it's no, closed it's been two years ago. It was only an no, operation it for was... about a year or so. No, it was open about five years or six years and closed a few, couple of years back and never reopened. I do not know whether there are any that are left open. So this is an interesting building. Let me see if I can give you a bit more of it. This is a beautiful hotel inside proper five star the prices reflect that but this is a case of you get what you pay for so this is the ned hotel i think it's part of a small chain it's not as huge as the sheraton or marriott uh, but there are several of them it's really nice inside, beautiful rooms. Most of it is Art Deco, really nice restaurants. One of the restaurants inside here, where we've been there before, is done like, uh, in the style of uh, New York uh, Jewish deli. So you can get your matzo ball soup, you can get your chopped liver, gefilte fish and uh, lots of